The final agreement on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, President Obama's landmark trade deal, has been reached. With me to speak about what this means for international trade is Christoph Bondi, a partner at public international law firm Volterra Fieta. Christoph, this deal marks the end of five years of bitter, intense negotiations. So what does it mean for the global economy? When you think that 40% of uh, the world's GDP is represented by the 12 member states that are uh, part of this agreement as of now, um, and it may add further uh, parties in the, in the near future. That alone signals that greater trade liberalization, investment liberalization between those countries is going to have uh, strong positive effects. I mean, there are numbers thrown around in the trillions of dollars. Uh, that remains to be seen, but it's certainly to be positive. So as you said, this is between 12 member states, but these states are in different stages of economic development. So does this mean the sort of the less developed states, such as Malaysia, for example, might be bullied by the more developed ones or will it be a fair deal? It's a fair deal. The uh, trade agreement, the TPP, includes specific provisions that allow less developed countries to live up to the obligations of the agreement, certain technical cooperation aspects of it. Any issues that are raised with regard to performance under the agreement have to be brought before a state-to-state -state tribunal in which uh, each party will have its fair say. And for countries that are not included, such as Africa, how will they be affected? Well, there could be knock-on effects. There probably will be uh, to the extent that trade and investment is stimulated in this really large trading block. Uh, that will likely give rise to demand indirectly for uh, products, potentially services from Africa. But there is, of course, the effect of the economic orientation of the countries in the bloc turning towards each other, focusing on economic opportunities within that bloc. So that's the interest of being a member of the club. There are concerns around international property rights, among other things. So what are the challenges with this deal? Well, the deal includes protection for investments abroad, including protection against direct and indirect expropriation by governments. But those kinds of obligations are fundamental. They're part of customary international law. And so this agreement is, in fact, a high standard agreement in that regard. And it's something that's going to stimulate international investment within this area because companies have the certainty that if they go into a host country, they'll be treated fairly. And uh, if they're expropriated, they'll be compensated. Well, it's being sold as a 21st century trade agenda, free trade, but it's actually managed trade. And critics argue that this will mean it will be hard to regulate economies. What do you make of this? To the extent that the agreement is seeking to liberalize economies, if those regulations were going in the direction of closing the economies to competition, obviously it poses a challenge to those regulations. Otherwise, the uh, agreement does nothing to affect the ability of domestic economies to regulate. And indeed, it includes a chapter on best regulatory practices. There is quite a lot of work still to be done in the domestic market, the US, of course, because this is when the public will be privy to the terms of the deal and it will open debate about the pros and cons, and especially with America moving ahead with its elections. And I think a lot of the opponents won't want to see Obama victorious. How do you see this playing out? Well, I understand that the current administration has a plan for explaining the deal to the U.S. public, explaining the deal further to uh, the U.S. Congress. There has to be approval, as in there has to be in each of these states. And I'm sure that there is going to be a very concerted effort to move the, for the agreement forward to ratification within the United States, uh, hopefully by the spring. So what happens next? When will it take effect? Do you think the spring this year? I've heard sort of 2017 to be bandied around. I think that is more realistic because you've got 12 member states who have to ratify the deal internally through their, each their own particular processes. I mean, I think all that debate is healthy in the United States and in other countries for the public to better understand the terms of the agreement. Japan was putting forward a proposal in August that when um, I think it was eight members of the TPP had ratified the deal, the deal would come into force between those member states. So it depends on whether or not those proposals survived in the final deal, but that could lead to an earlier entry into force of the agreement. And how can businesses take advantage? By already looking at the terms of the agreement, trying to understand them, trying to see how they fit in with their current or potential business plans, and being poised to take advantage of the agreement when it does take effect.